So now we start on the Bright Business Orbit. This is the uh, document that you've got in front of you here. Um, and I'm going to take you through this piece by piece. Now the way it works, in the middle here, this is like a one star business. As you move out, it becomes a five star business. So along this trajectory, this is where we want to be heading. And then we've got the different segments that we'll look at. So we've got leadership and management. Then we've got finance, so we're going to look at the finance. Then we're going to look at the operations to make sure it's working properly. Then we're going to look at the people. And when you've got that firm foundation, then we're going to look at the marketing and we're going to look at the sales. So those are the key areas that we're going to go through today and start putting in your plan which bits you're going to actually do. Now don't try and do the lot because when you start with you're all enthusiastic and you want to do 15 different things for each area, you can't. Pick one, two, maybe three at the most. If you've got a bigger team, you can have a few more, but only if you allocate the task to somebody else. It's about making sure that you've got something that's achievable. Uh, it's going to stretch you a bit, but not ridiculously huge list. Okay, So let's start with this. The first section is leadership. And there's personal leadership, and it's, so it starts with you. So you've got to look at what am I doing, how am I doing what I do, and am I going to get the results that I want from doing that? What are my glass ceilings? What are the things that I need to recognise? My limiting beliefs and do some work to get rid of those things so that you can carry on and achieve. And then we look at how do we lead our people? How are we going to make sure our people want to follow us? How are we going to make sure that they want to go where you want to go and that you set the vision for them and they'll start helping you deliver that? So they're the first two things you've got to work on when you go into business. Because otherwise you're running around on a hamster wheel, not knowing where you're going and not getting very far. So we've got to make sure we're focused. And one of the reasons we use goals is we use it to focus on your RAS, your reticular activating system. And your RAS is part of your brain and part of your brain that's a filter. And it's a filter that allows you to concentrate on a few things. Because otherwise there's hundreds of things happening all the time and you'll just be distracted all the time. So what we do is we set your filter so that you notice the things that you put in your goals and you'll start finding ways to achieve them. Now I can demonstrate this. If you've, has anyone bought a new car recently? Or do they remember buying a car and then suddenly noticing that car on the road everywhere? Is that right? Now with your RAS you can either have it set for you by the culture and the environment and the parents around you um, and you know and sometimes these are called limiting beliefs because they sometimes can be negative. Sometimes they're positive and with the best will in the world you know those of us who are parents in the room. Yeah we want to really set our children that they can achieve anything and do whatever they want. Um, but you've got to have that, you know, that programming set in them that they can do that instead of all the no's and negatives that they can get. Didn't they say there was a study done where the kids get 400 no's a day and about 10 yeses or something? You know, they get a lot of negativity. So we've got to start programming ourselves with what we want to achieve and then we can achieve it. And you'll start noticing things where you never noticed them before. You'll be waking up in the morning with an idea, you'll be standing in the shower, an idea will come to you because it's stuff that you've programmed into your RAS that you're focusing on achieving. So it's like a compass for your brain, it helps you find your way through life. Now time is the area that we've got to work on. We first start on your own uh, objectives, it's about getting yourself organised. Because when you can get yourself organised, you can get more done. So, get some kind of timetable so you know the key rocks, the key elements, the key things that you need to be doing in your week. So you, you go, oh yeah, Monday morning we have a team meeting, Friday afternoon we do a review meeting, Wednesday morning we do a marketing meeting, or whatever it is, you know that you're getting those blocks of things done. Now it's a default, which means by default my Monday mornings are for working on my business, but this morning I'm working with you guys, so it's not happened today, it's just a default that that's what I aim to do. It gives you that thing to aim at and, and gives you the, you know, the way, where are you going to spend your time, what are you doing? So it just gives you sort of um, more control of your diary. Because you'll know when, uh, uh, when you don't have any um, uh, barriers in place around your diary, people will fill it for you. Yeah? Nature abhors a vacuum and you'll be jetting off all over the place. 
If you want to do something and you need time to do it, you book preparation time into your diary to do that as well. Otherwise, other people will fill it with other things and you won't get it done. So, if we now look at the, the uh, business leadership, because that was the personal leadership stuff, uh, we're now going to look at the business leadership. And the business leadership is about having these quarterly plans. Uh, because ultimately, as I've said to you a number of times today, you need to have something that, yeah, big picture's great and vision and all that stuff is helpful and it gives you attention to, to sort of get you motivated. But actually, to get things done, it comes right down to right in front of you. It's a bit like a sat-nav. You program the sat-nav for the destination, that's your strategic planning. But to make it actually work, it's a 90-day plan, that's what's on screen. That's, that's what's happening right now, what you've got to work on to get where you've got to get to. And that's what you've got to focus on. And so we talk about having quarters because that's enough time for you to be planning out. But it doesn't mean you just do it once a quarter and look at it once a quarter. It means you look, write it once a quarter and then you review it every week to make sure you're on target. And what you do is you look at a plan. You don't just plan the bits you like doing. You know, It's a bit like uh, if anyone, um, uh, for a while I used to go to a gym. And um, until I got a personal trainer at the gym, I used to go and do the bits I liked doing, including the jacuzzi, right? <laughs> Whereas when I got a personal trainer, it'd be like, okay, you're doing arms and back on a Monday. On a Wednesday, you're doing some cardio. On Friday, you're going to do your legs. You know, you're going to ache all weekend, so suffer for it. You know, <laughs> that's the way it is. So you had to do a holistic view. And this is a holistic view of your business. So as I said, a lot of people are doing this with their business. Lots of things are happening. What we want to do is put the business plan in place so that it starts flying in formation. All the parts start working together. And that's what's key. And so the higher level is to start looking at that strategy and vision and where are we going. But let's get that basic, immediate things that we need to get done in place. And then we can start thinking about the bigger picture. And you know, what is driving you? Why? What are you doing it for in the first place? You know. It's easy to go and get a job. So what are you doing it for? You've got to have a clear reason about what you're doing it for, what is your end game, why do you want to be doing this? Why is it important to you? Is it important enough to get you working at midnight last night on your presentation after you've done four hours of a crab grading or get up early this morning and get here? You know, you've got to have a big vision. So your vision is all about, that's the uh, um, north face of uh, Everest. When you're standing there looking up at you thinking, I don't know how I'm going to go up there. Well, that's okay, because you just got to have that big vision. And you get up there one step at a time. You start thinking about where I'm going to do it, and you get your team, and you connect your team in with you, and you say, this is where we're going, and you hook them together, and you work together. You'll notice that there's actually a rope dragging along the floor at the back there. That's because there was one bloke sitting on the back on a pair of skis like that, just getting dragged up the hill by the rest of them. So, you know, chop them off and get rid of those and work on the ones who want to come with you. And then make sure you've got this plan and you're reviewing it regularly. You know, there's that regular monthly review, quarterly planning, redoing that, going through it with the management team. Create a management team. If you haven't got people who are management material, just have a few people that you can bounce ideas off around in your business that just makes them feel like they're part of it. And then develop that culture. You know, what's the culture going to be like? Now, um, there's a guy called Tony Shea. He built a pretty successful business called Zappos. Uh, he sold it uh, to Amazon for 1.2 billion. It took him 10 years to build it. That's not a bad return for 10 years' work, is it? In anyone's money, even if it is dollars. I'd accept that. <laughs> um, and he says he thought culture was too corporate a thing to do. But actually what he realised as he was building it, the culture became one of the most important things he has. I know you've got a bigger team now, Ricky. Having that right culture, it works, isn't it? Getting people to play hard, work hard, work together. It, it means that you know, you've got the right people. If you hire the wrong people by, for some reason, a good culture will get rid of the bad people all by itself. You don't even have to do it. I know at this place, Zappos, they would hire people, they'd have to do a six week intensive um, in introduction, induction, and um, at the end of it, I think they'd offer them a cheque for like $2,000 to turn down the job. If you don't want to come and join us now, we'll give you a cheque for $2,000 to leave. 
and they were like, you know, they really wanted to make sure you wanted to work there. After you'd seen the full induction, you knew what it was about. So that's their culture, which is one around creating a wow through service, uh, embracing and driving change, create fun and a little weirdness, which I quite like that one. Uh, be adventurous, creative and open-minded. Pursue growth and learning. Uh, build open and honest relationships and communication. Uh, build a positive team with a family spirit. Do more with less. Be passionate and determined and be humble. So that's just theirs. Now you can look that up on the internet, but I suggest we start creating something for yourself based around your own things that matter to you in your business. And then it gets on to the last area, if you like the four star version is the strategic planning. 20% of your week is based on strategic work. That's where you really want to get to. And ultimately, to totally free yourself up and get that freedom is you'll hire an MD or a general manager to run the business. So I know Steve used to be a general manager for a company. He basically ran it all for them. You know, they didn't have to worry about it too much. He ran it all for them. Um, and you know, ultimately that's what you do. You get somebody in place who can run your business for you.